I'm Roman Yossi of the National Predator. I'm Dante Fabro of the Nashville Predators. This is Philip Forsberg of the Nashville Predators. I'm Colton Sissons of the Nashville Predators. I'm Eustace Aros of the Nashville Predators. You're listening to the Renegades of Puck with Crazy Charlie. Welcome to the Bunker. Welcome to the Renegades of Puck podcast. I'm your host and captain, Crazy Charlie. So before we get started with the No Have Step in Hockey coverage first, let me direct you to our home website, renegadesofpuck.com. Once you go to renegadesofpuck.com, you'll learn everything you need to know about the show. And once you're getting educated about the show, click on that merchandise tab. Stay straight to our class logo t-shirt, our pride logo t-shirt, all of our different special event t-shirts, and so much more. All of the gimmicks you come to know and love and expect from Renegades of Puck are all still available in our online store, whether that's socks, throw pillows, wall art, bed sets, or so much more. Something like 88 different items in our online store that's available to you. After all, we've sold out so that you can buy in. Social media is of critical importance to this operation, so here's how you can support the Renegades of Puck. You can check us out on multiple platforms, whatever you prefer. It doesn't cost you a thing, doesn't take you about a second, so help us out. Instagram or X or perhaps threads even as we're trying to build that up over there. Facebook and TikTok as well is where you can find the Renegades of Puck on social media. Also, YouTube. This is of much importance to us at this time, Renegades. Thank you so much to all of our recent subscribers. Thank you. So go to YouTube and just search Renegades of Puck and subscribe to our page today you'll find the latest episodes of renegades of puck tv all of our different interviews our different segments recaps uh, previews all of the different things that we do here from the bunker you'll find them all chopped up and placed perfectly right there on our youtube page so please check us out there and thanks to the full press predators podcast the full press nhl network the podcast here that you're currently listening to and watching has gone from local to global from 2023 to 2024 the quickly approaching 10 million all-time downloads and we are so so appreciative of each and every one of you out there for checking out the show you can find us on google stitcher amazon spotify and several other podcast platforms whatever it is you prefer just search renegades of puck today venmo is how you can support the show financially you can make a donation by going to venmo and just searching renegades of puck or you can scan the qr code that's currently on your screen every dollar goes a long way to helping the renegades of puck this independent hockey operation you can see the results of your donations over the years as we have built in magnificent broadcasting studio and facility here and we look to continue upgrading our technology our equipment and yes the hvac system behind the scenes it's pretty cold out here in the bunker today but we were going to wear a funny hat anyway because it is after all stadium classic weekend and it's uh the anniversary of the national predators winter classic so we thought we would go ahead and celebrate all things outdoor hockey while we were in a freezing cold studio and bunker so that's going to do it for the promotional portion of the show let's get to the know how step in hockey coverage it is time to deliver the goods time for Operation number 871. That's right, show number 871. At this moment in hockey history, National Predators currently find themselves in fifth place in the Central Division after 55 games skated. They have a record of 28, 25, and 2, 58 points. They have a record on the road, which is where their next game will take place of 14, 10, and 2. They've scored 167 goals in the season. They've given up 179 goals against. They have a goal differential of minus 12. Now, the Central Division is getting a little bit more interesting, got a little bit tighter after this most recent Predators game. The Dallas Stars still in first. First place at 75 points. The Winnipeg Jets in second place at 71 points. And the Colorado Avalanche in third place at 70 points. Then you'll find the wild card pack as we're starting to refer to it. The fourth place in the Central Division, St. Louis Blues, have 60 points. While the National Prayers in fifth place have 58 points. And the Minnesota Wild in sixth place have 56 points. And then... We have the final two teams in the division, and the Arizona Coyotes were highly competitive in the wild card chase group for uh, some time, but they seem to be taking a fall back right now and pretty quickly. 50 points has them at seventh in the Central Division, and the Chicago Blackhawks, the only team behind them with 33 points. They've also skated 55 games, the most amount in the Central Division so far this season. That's got you updated on the Central Division. The Predators in the thick of it right there in the 4 5 6 race, but that also ties into the wild card where we find LA sitting in wild card one 62 points on the season what an incredible comeback against the Boston Bruins in Boston and their most recent victory the St. Louis Blues find themselves at 60 points two points behind LA in wild card two the Nashville Predators the first team on the outside looking in 58 points two points behind St. Louis and then Minnesota is at 56 points two points behind the Preds four points out of that last wild card spot so something to track and keep an eye on as we continue moving forward in the 
this season. Now, for the Nashville Predators, they are in the thick of it right now. They're in the middle of a five-game massive, perhaps season-consequence-style road trip. They have already completed one game, which we are going to recap here momentarily against the St. Louis Blues. And they were previewing the game right now that's coming up next against the Vegas Golden Knights. But then after that game, Thursday... Massive Western Conference wildcard playoff game. The National Purse in Los Angeles to take on the Kings Saturday at San Jose, Sunday at Anaheim. So back to back coming up next weekend, coming back home on the 27th of February versus the Ottawa Senators and closing out the month of February. That's right. It's a leap year this year. So we have a February the 29th and the Preds will be on the ice at Bridgestone Arena will be playing against the Minnesota Wild. Now for the Preds and the Vegas Golden Knights, which are the Predators next opponent. They have only played one time this season. They'll play one more time after. After this, so this is the hinge game of the season rivalry. And back on January the 15th, it did not go well for the National Predators in Vegas. They lost four to one. UC Soros went 25 out of 28, took the loss. Luke Evangelista scored the only goal for the Preds. Thompson picked up the win in net for the Knights, 34 out of 35. And it was Stone dominant, three goals for the hat trick in that game. Marshall also picked up a goal in that game for the Vegas Golden Knights. These two teams will meet one and only night in Nashville at Bridgestone. That's going to take place on March the 26th. Now, the Vegas Golden Knights. I've talked about them a bunch of times. Let's get caught up on what they've been doing since the last time the Preds saw them. They have an overall record of 31, 17, and 6. 68 points has them second in the Pacific Division, just behind the Vancouver Canucks. At home ice, 19, 7, and 2 is better than respectable. That's actually quite good. 173 goals scored on the season, 149 goals against. That's a goal differential of plus 24. All of those numbers are fairly impressive. Now, let's go back and talk about their most recent stretch of hockey on the 20th. 7th of January is a 5-2 loss at the Detroit Red Wings. The Red Wings have been a much better and hotter team than people might think as of late. That loss is not as bad as you might think on the 6th of February, coming out of the All-Star break. A 3-1 win versus the Edmonton Oilers on the 8th of February, 3-2 win at the Arizona Coyotes on the 12th of February, 5-3 loss versus the Minnesota Wild on the 17th of February, a 3-1 loss at the Carolina Hurricanes. That was their most recent game played Monday. They'll be in San Jose before hosting the National Predators on Tuesday, so back-to-back for the Vegas Golden Knights is something we need to take into account going into this game against the Nashville Predators. Take a look inside the numbers of the matchup for this particular game, where these two teams are at this moment in the season. Goals for the National Predators averaging three per game. That's 18th best in the NHL, while the Vegas Golden Knights averaging 3.13 per game. That is 14th best overall in the NHL. The Vegas Golden Knights are only giving up 2.74 goals against per game. That's 7th best in the NHL, while the Predators are giving up 3.25. That is 22nd overall in the NHL. In the shots for category, the Preds are generating 31 on net per game, 15th right there in the middle of the pack. And the Vegas Golden Knights it's also in the middle of the pack, generating 31.2 on net per game. That is 14th overall in the National Hockey League. In the shots against category, these two teams are also very close. 30.5 for Vegas, 30.6 on net for Nashville. That has them at 20th and 22nd razor-thin margin right there of those rankings. In the special teams categories, it is going to be Vegas favored in both of these particular metrics. Their power play is converting at 19.6% of the season. That's 20th overall in the NHL. 35 out of 179 opportunities. The Predators converting at 19.4% is 21st overall in the NHL. One spot behind Vegas, 37 out of 191 opportunities. On the penalty kill, Vegas Golden Knights have a kill rate of 80.5%. That's 12th best in the NHL. 29 power play goals against the Predators have a kill rate of 75.4%. That's 27th in the league. 43 power play goals against, though, is a just massive, massive number, and it continues uh, swelling. It's not good what's happening with the National Predators penalty kill as of late as they continue sinking in the rankings and also just giving up massive, massive amounts of goals. It's not just the percentages. When it comes to each and every team in the NHL, it's an incredible amount of talent in this league, and we always like to talk about at least the top five scorers for each team, and then the anticipated goaltender matchup for this Nashville Predators team. Philip Porsberg back ticking in the right direction, 26 goals, 29 points, 55, oh, 55 points overall, 26 goals, 29 assists, 55 points. How did you bone that one? Philip Forsberg, 55 points, now has him back to a point per game on the season. Nashville Predators skated in 55 games. Philip Forsberg has 55 points to Captain Romeo the second player on the Preds to eclipse 50 points this season, 11 goals and 39 assists for 50 points. O'Reilly now has 20 goals, the second player on the season to reach the 20 goal mark, plus 27 assists for 47 points. Nyquist 12 and 30 for 42. Tommy Novak 11 goals and 16 assists for 27 points. Over on the other side of the ledger for the home team, the Vegas Golden Knights. Stone 
has 16 goals on the season, 36 assists, 52 points. And remember, three of those 16 goals came against the Nashville Purs in the one and only meeting between these two teams earlier this season in Vegas, back on January the 15th. March or so, 28 goals. It's hard to stop him. One of his 28 goals came against this Nashville Purs team in that same game. 16 assists added to that is for 44 points on the season. So March or so, 28 goals obviously paces the Vegas Golden Knights in that particular category. And Stone's 36 assists paces the Vegas Golden Knights in that category. Jack Jack Eichel, nice even season, 19 goals, 25 assists, 44 points. Carlson, 16 and 18 for 34. And Barbashev, 13 and 19 for 32. Anticipated goaltender matchup, a little hard to tell because not sure how the Vegas Golden Knights are going to deploy their net minders in the Monday, Tuesday back to back. So I'll give you the numbers for both of them. Thompson, 16, 10 and 4, 906 save percentage, 2.76 goals against average. And Aiden Hill, 14, 4 and 2, impressive. 931 save percentage, 2.06 goals against average with two shutouts. And it's kind of funny that I give you both of their stats statistics anyway because it's a it's a tandem you know the Vegas Golden Knights are completely comfortable with having uh, 30 wins divided up between two goaltenders at 16 and 14 it's pretty remarkable the performances they're getting in net considering some of the history uh, of that franchise with their goaltending UC Soros on the other side of the ledger has a record of 21 21 and 2 even at 500 902 save percentage 3.02 goals against average he also has two shutouts on the season listen Second game of a five-game road trip for the Nashville Predators. This is critically important. The Predators, this is one of the toughest stops, one of the toughest games they have on this road trip. They have winnable games in San Jose, winnable game in Anaheim. L.A. is a important win in so many different ways because of where the two teams are comparable in the wild card race right now. But this Vegas game is probably the toughest stop on the road trip for the Nashville Predators, and they need to come up with a huge performance. They picked up two out of two points on the road trip so far. There's still eight points available and four more games to go on this road trip. Vegas, keep the momentum rolling, Nashville Predators. You got yourself a big victory in St. Louis. Let's go talk about that right now so we can get to the analysis portion of things and get back to this particular part of the discussion. We'll pick that back up a little bit later in the episode. For now, let's get to the Rebirth Sports full game recap. It's coming up next right here on the Renegades Puck Podcast. Hockey players are as unique as the game itself, and your uniform should be tailored to fit you. Rebirth Sports is your sports apparel tailor. From shells, bags, warm-ups, hats, hoodies, branding, and more, let Rebirth Sports be your custom hockey tailor. And don't forget to tell them they do more than just hockey. Rebirth Sports on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Rebirth Sport, a match made in hockey. It's now time for the Rebirth Sports full game recap. We go all the way back to February 17th, the year 2024, when the Nashville Predators were in St. Louis to face off against the Blues for the second of three regular season meetings. Head coach Andrew Burnett deploys his lines and defensive combinations in the following way. Forsberg, O'Reilly, and Nyquist, Glass, Sissons, and Evangelista. Jankowski, Novak, and Trennan. Sherwood, McCarron, and Smith. By the way, McCarron, a fresh two-year contract extension. Yossi and Fabro, McDonough, and Shen, lose on a carrier defense pairings. UC Soros gets the start in net, and we are just 17 seconds into the game in St. Louis, and it's Soros coming up with a save on Neighbors' first shot on goal of the game. 125 of the first period, Soros coming up with a save on Rosen, plus the rebound follow-up. Multiple shot and scoring opportunities for the St. Louis Blues here in the first two minutes of this game with the 213 mark of the first period. It's Binnington coming up with a save on Fabro plus McCarron's follow-up. First shot on goal, first scoring opportunity for the Nashville Purs at 310 of the first period. It's UC Soros coming up with a save on Neighbors again. 410 of the first period. First goal of the game goes to Colton Sissons of the Nashville Purs. His 14th of the year comes off of a partial deflection off of the defense and into the net. Nashville Purs have a 1-0 lead earlier in this game. A significant difference from their previous effort against the Dallas Stars on home ice. The 607 mark of the first period, it's a Binnington coming up with a save on Fabro at 808 Binnington. A save on McDonough at the 1010 mark, just crossing over the middle point in the first period. Soros coming with a save on Tory Krug, and then you see Soros is going to have to go to work because the 1110 mark. Soros comes with a save on Sunquist. 1410. Soros comes with a save on Kairou's deflection. Good scoring chance there for St. Louis at 1426. Binnington comes with a save on Glass. Our first penalty of the game comes at 1433. When Tropachenko goes off to the box two minutes for interference the Nashville Purs first power play opportunity would only generate one shot on goal Bennington would stop glass and that would be it for the Preds but it's 1707 of the first it's going to be the St. Louis Blues getting their first power play opportunity of the game as Trennan's picking up a penalty two minutes for boarding and then we will see Luzon picking up a penalty as well two minutes 
four high, sticking, getting way too physical in front of the net. Five on three now for the St. Louis Blues for potentially a minute and 21 seconds. We see UC Saros coming with a save on Shen, and then we see UC Saros coming with another save on Thomas, but then Kairou is going to cash in with his 19th goal of the season, giving the St. Louis Blues their first goal of the game, tying the game up at one apiece. It was a weak side one-timer with only one second left in the five-on-three power play, so there would be a remaining 38 seconds of the power play after that one second would expire. National Bears would do an expert job of killing that off and getting out of the first period. Now, because of the special teams play, the Preds ended up getting outshot at the end of the first period. But overall, well, overall, a much better period than they had in their previous game's first period. St. Louis won Nashville one after one. St. Louis out shooting Nashville 12 to 8. We get into the second period. It only took nine seconds for the National Bears to get their first shot on net. Binnington comes up with a save on Philip Forsberg at the 117 mark of the second period. Saros coming up with a save on Bukinavich with the middle of the mask right there between the eyes. 335 of the second period. Bennington, a save on Favreau at 450. Bennington, a save on Forsberg at 507. Bennington, a save on Yakov Trenton at 628. Jordan Bennington comes up with a save on Cole Smith. Heavy action there in the defensive zone for the St. Louis Blues at 649 of the second period. Saros comes up with a save on Hayes at the 708 mark of the second. Bennington comes up with a save on Sherwood at the 934. Bennington back to work again. Another save this time on Colton Sissons right at the middle point of the game. The 10-minute mark of the second. Saros comes up with a save on Thomas at the 10. 36 mark of the second period. Juicy Saros coming with a blocker save on Buknevich sliding across one of the better saves for UC Saros in this game, and he would have to make a number of big time saves at the 1053 mark of the second Saros. A save on neighbors, 1153 Saros, a save on Kessel. This was a huge sequence for UC Saros in this game, keeping the Nashville Predators in this one. 1309 mark, it's Luke Evangelista picking up his 10th goal of the season. He outweights Binnington and tucks the pucks in the empty net on the partial breakaway. Use the speed, use the skill, raise the leg like the Flamingo gave the fake, and fake Bennington right out of position, giving the open net to Luke Evangelista and giving the Predators a 2-1 to one lead in this game. What a hell of a move, a hell of a play, and a hell of a finish by Luke Evangelista. Great to see him back in the lineup. Of course, we made quite the argument for him to be back in the lineup, and that argument proved to be correct. At the 14:53 mark of the second period with the National Predators leading 2-1, Bennington coming with the save of the captain, Roman Yossi, 15 1825. Saros, a save on Kessel. 1648. Bennington, a save on Tommy Novak. And we head to the backside of the sheet. And we find it 1716 of the second period. It is Glass, who is off to the box. Two minutes for hooking. This is going to put the St. Louis Blues on the power play, just like at the end of the first period. Preds getting themselves involved in some troubling special team situations. Saros comes up with a big save on Krug. And then we find Shen getting called for holding. But no, it is not going to be a five on three a penalty shot which was the right call has been awarded to neighbors absolutely shen pulled from behind on the breakaway and it is going to be uc stars coming out with a huge save on the penalty shot for neighbors the power play resumes just five on four stars comes up with a save on hayes Preds get out of the second period, still being outshot in this game, 28-20 to 20 overall. We get the clean sheet into the third period. You know what? Action starts off a little bit slow, a little bit tight. The National Predators have obviously come out with a defensive mindset, especially in the neutral zone, so it takes all the way until 3.56 of the third period before we get our first action. It's Bennington coming up with a save on Luzano. Really good scoring chance. A good low shot right here by Luzano. Almost trick Bennington. Bennington at the 432 mark of the third period. It's Bennington coming up with a save on the captain, Roman Yossi, at the 538 mark of the third period. UC Saros comes up with his first save of the third period, and that would be on Walker's wrist shot at the 618 mark of the third period. It's Blay off the box, two minutes for interference, and this was a close call, but you know what? I would not have disagreed if this was a non-call. The puck was really still in the area, very much so. Not sure that I agree with the call off the Nashville Predators on the power play. That's the fact. So we're getting back to the game right here. And we find on the Nashville Predators power play, it is Philip Forsberg getting his 26th goal of the season. You give him the time and the space, and he's going to walk it in from the top of the circle as close as he can before picking his spot and just absolutely ripping it. Nyquist, great job setting the screen. Wasn't sure if perhaps Nyquist had deflected the puck, but it looks like the puck goes in off of Bennington. It definitely changed angle on its way into the net. But 
Philip Forsberg's 26th goal of the season comes on the power play at a critical moment in this game and gives the Nashville Predators a 3-1 to lead. Now at the 7.51 mark, as soon as we get back to 5-on-5 five five play, it is Shen getting his first goal as a Nashville Predator. First goal of the season. It was a long shot through traffic. The Nashville Predators again doing a very good job of causing Jordan Bennington a tough time of seeing the puck in any way. So Shen gets his first goal of the season. It finds its way in. It goes off of Bennington and then into the net. And just like that, the Nashville Predators have a 4-1 to lead here in the third period on the road in St. Louis. At the 8-19 mark of the third period, Luzon gets involved with some stuff that the Predators frankly did not need at this moment in time. Two minutes for roughing. He was responding to a big clean hit that took place against Alex Carey. But Alex Carey is a big boy. He picked himself back up and got right back in the play. It wasn't just Luzon. It was Sherwood. It was almost everybody on the Predators decided to go after the St. Louis Blues player. It was just not necessary. Luzon picks up a penalty. Two minutes for roughing just after the Nashville Predators go up. Four to one. It is going to be Sunquist, though, coming up with a penalty two minutes for interference before the end of the St. Louis power play. It's going to lead to an incredibly short power play for or four on four situation of only two seconds. The power play for the Nashville Purs would be after that for a minute fifty eight seconds. Bennington would come up with a save on Yossi, and that would be the end of the Nashville Predators power play. The twelve fifty two mark of the third period. It's Walker, his fifth goal of the season, some rebound jam at the edge of the blue paint for St. Louis gets them their second goal of the game. The Predators lead 4-2 to two now here in the third period. And it was just Walker doing a good job getting to the front of the net and working hard getting that rebound. 13-57 in the third. Saros a save on Kessel plus the follow-up by Captain 1406. Saros a save on Kessel. 16-49. Saros a save on Shen. All incredibly difficult and tough saves at this time of the game while the St. Louis Blues were really putting the pressure on the comeback. 18-28. O'Reilly's empty net goal is his 20th of the season. Gives Nashville Purs a 5-2 lead. That will effectively do it. But in 1916, we have Bennington doing something dumb because he's a dick and picking up a penalty two minutes for high sticking. The Nashville Purs would finish the game on the power play, but they would finish the game with a 5-2 victory. St. Louis would outshoot Nashville 37-33. And the Nashville Purs a considerably better effort. And I really appreciate the way the Predators closed out periods going really hard up until the finer buzzle, the finer whistle, whistle at all times. That's the type of effort that head coach was looking for and for the Preds a truly truly necessary and needed um, game to get back on track in the win column so for the Predators great job to go on the road go to St. Louis and what I consider to be a must win game pick up the two points do it in pretty good fashion coming with the five to two victory so for the Nashville Predators finally you could take a deep breath at least until Tuesday in Vegas that's going to do it for the Rebirth Sports full game recap we got full analysis and so much more coming up next on the Renegades of Puck podcast hello 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 I'm Tracy owner operator of strong style fitness and that's me and my training assistant Rizzo and we are here to bring you fitness that meets you where you are by offering circuit classes bar inspired classes to bottle workouts boot camps guided stretching and more all taught by a certified personal trainer me to learn more Go to our website, strongstylefit.com. Subscribe on YouTube at Strong Style Fitness. Follow on social media at Strong Style Fit. But most importantly, let's get you moving. It doesn't matter if it's your first workout or you've been doing it for years. Strong Style Fitness has the workout that meets you on your journey and helps you along the path to a happier, healthier life. I understand where you've been what you were going through, and where you were going. And I want to take you there. We'll see you on the mat. Mwah. Welcome back in Renegades of Puck Podcast. That was the Rebirth Sports Full Game Recap. It is now time for the analysis and opinion portion of the show. You see Soros, 35 out of 37. Two goals against one of those came on a five on three, made eight power play saves, and he was solid all day in every way. That was a stellar performance from your starting goaltender and a goaltender that has been a Vezina finalist before and easily could win a Vezina before the end of his career. It won't be this year, but he easily could before the end of his career. But UC Soros, stellar in this game. I thought that he was 
phenomenal if you go back and you watch some of the saves that he was making, especially uh, late in the first period, late in the second period. Uh, he was exceptional in net. And for UC Stars, a great bounce back game for him. And overall in the season, the numbers aren't exactly where anybody would like them to be. But 21 wins on the season and a stellar performance on the road in St. Louis when I was questioning whether he should get that start or not. I think he gets the start in Vegas. Ride the momentum on this road trip. You have some other games coming up, including a back-to-back -back that Lankanen might be better suited for. Moving on to the next point on my list, Luke Evangelista. Back in the lineup. Never should have been out of the lineup. He comes back in. One hell of a goal. Drops the leg up like a flamingo. Fakes Bennington out of position. And then just slides the puck right into that empty net. Picking up a goal. A great return for Luke Evangelista in the lineup. I thought that he looked tremendous out there. He only got 13.33 in total time on ice. But he did get some power play time at 2.05. He did get that one shot on goal. And he did block one shot in this game. So I thought Luke Evangelista had a strong return. I wanted to make a point of having him number one one when it came to the skaters to discuss to put the emphasis on the fact that I thought he should have never been taken out of the lineup getting back in the lineup though Luke Evangelista looked hungry he looked fast and he was certainly prepared to finish great lift of the leg on the flamingo fake I love it going all the way back to Mike Gartner Mark Messier back to classic throwbacks when that move first started to become more prominent in the NHL just awesome awesome to see Philip Forsberg picks up a goal and assist in this game he had two points overall 55 points on the season back to a point per game heating up Phil Brewery, you would still like to see him put quite a few more goals on the board here on this road trip. I would not uh, be surprised at all if Phil Forsberg comes back home at the end of this month at the 30 goal mark. Uh, I think he's going to pick up a couple more goals in these next couple of games between Vegas, LA, San Jose, Anaheim. I think Phil Forsberg will end up with four more goals on this road trip. Great to see him back on the sheet yet again. He seems to have a new attitude. He's a bit more aggressive. He's ready to get in there and muck it up and go to the hard areas. And for Phil Philip Forsberg, he's managed to maintain health. He's managed to maintain offensive consistency. And if he continues uh, going at this route, uh, it will no doubt be the best season of his career offensively. Maybe not tops in goals, but I still think he has an outside shot at the 40-goal mark this season. Uh, but I think he's going to be at 30 goals at the end of this road trip, and that'll go a long way to helping that. So he is heating up at just the right time, and he always does. He's always a more impactful offensive player in the latter part of the season than he is in the first three quarters of the season. Everybody knows that we've all watched him here long enough in Nashville to know that he is heating up at the right time, the same time he always does. It's the first half of the season where Forsberg usually doesn't put up the big numbers. He built the foundation. Now go ahead and continue building that gigantic mansion right on top of it. O'Reilly picked up a goal and assist. Going back to St. Louis in this one for two points. 20 goals on the season, 47 points. And you think about it, you look at it, and you see Dallas was just in town, and Matt Duchesne was just went over 20 goals and is right up there around 50 points. Well, it's worth Placement. Ryan O'Reilly is at 20 goals and 47 points, so the offensive output is comparable between the player that left and the player that was brought in to replace him. Yes, I know financially some of the money is questionable and suspect, and it, you would prefer it worked out a different way, but Ryan O'Reilly, that's not on him. He is probably the best signing so far for Barry Trotz in the early part of his GM career, and the two points in this one just puts him up to 47 on the season, so he's going to easily be over 50 points on the season in his first year as a Nashville player. He's over 20 goals already. Ready, and he's just a fantastic addition to this franchise overall. And see him go back into St. Louis, and even though it was an empty netter, see him pick up that goal and get a chance to smile and celebrate. Oh, that was great. Great for Ryan O'Reilly. I do enjoy watching the nuance and the small details of his game on a night in and night out basis. Luke Shen, for all the shit he gets on this show and everywhere else, we are definitely going to pause and say Stick tap solution for his first goal as a Nashville Per his first goal on the season. It was a long shot with some good traffic, but he put it past Bennington and he puts the puck in the net. And again, we complain about Luke Shen a whole lot. Five hits in this game also was second on the team overall. 1732 in time on ice, 204 in shorthand time on ice. It's probably the most positive things I've said about Luke Shen all season long, but he picked up a goal, his first ever as a Nashville Per, his first of the season. And it came in a game that was at the most pivotal point in the season so Luke Shen as a longtime veteran in front of his family against his brother in a division rivalry game with huge playoff implications Luke Shen stepped up big time in this game picking up his first goal of the season so stick taps to Luke for that you know what we tear down but we also build back up here in the trenches and a much better start and effort 
leads to a win. Of, of course, right? When you don't get out shot 18 to 1 and give up four goals in the first period, uh, it gives you a much better opportunity to win. Uh, the Predators, look, they weren't perfect and they're not going to be perfect, but when they come out of the gate skating hard and they come out and they're pushing and they're working and they're playing physical and they're blocking shots and they're playing solid team defense in front of UC Soros, that, that allows UC Soros to have the confidence to step up and, and have the game. But for the Predators playing from ahead in this one, last game, again, I, I don't want to keep talking about it, but that last game down by four goals in the first period, this game up 4-10 into the first period for the Nashville Predators. They played from ahead the rest of the day. The game would be tied, but the Nashville Predators would get the lead back, and then they would build on that lead, and when they needed it, their top players came through big time. Forsberg, O'Reilly with goals in this game, and eventually Easter back on the ice picking up a goal in this game. So the Nashville Predators, a much better start, and it was good to see them at the end of periods. Uh, let's, let's say in... Moments of where there's no consequence, where, say, the the last seven, eight seconds of a period are ticking off. The Predators were still skating hard and pressing in these moments. These are the the small moments that the coaches look for. These are the small moments that you look for in analysis when you want to know where a team is going. And And the Predators are trending back in a good direction. We know they can put together a solid stretch of hockey. Getting the first win on this road trip is of critical importance if they can now go on to continue having success. On this road trip, we said before the trip started, seven out of ten points would be optimal if they can find a way to do better. Superb. If they find a way not to do as good, well, then we've got things we got to start discussing. So for the Predators, two and two so far, and that is good news. And it all happened because of a better start to the game and a better effort. And with a weird start time on a Saturday afternoon, that could have definitely mucked things up, but it did not. Let's hear from our great friends at Stripe Digital Solutions. Let's get into the good, cold, hard numbers known as the box score. Close this show out and send you on to watch a little more outdoor hockey up there in the Northeast. The digital environment can be quite intimidating, time-consuming, and cumbersome, especially with all those other areas that need attention at your business. And that's why Stripe Digital Solutions is here to help. I know because that's exactly what Stripe Digital Solutions did for me and the renegades of Puck. From designing my home website and helping me create my merchandise to special event posters, brand building, and social media management, but it's not just that, it's so much more. Stripe Digital Solutions has helped me every step of the way. From startup to full-time operation, Stripe Digital Solutions has been there to assist and advise every single step of the journey. In today's fast-paced world, the path to success is having a strong digital partner and nobody is better in the trenches than Brandy and Stripe Digital Solutions. Get the solution before it's even a problem with Stripe Digital Solutions. Welcome back in Renegades of Puck Podcast. Time for the good, cold, hard numbers. Notice the box score. Your goal scores for the Nashville Predators. There were five of them in this game. Four goals coming from the forwards. One goal coming from the defense. It was Luke Evangelista, Philip Forsberg, Ryan O'Reilly, and Colton Sissons all with goals from the forwards in this game. And Shen picks up his first goal of the season and first as a Nashville Predator on the assist side of things. Nobody with more than one. Philip Forsberg did pick up an assist. Gus Nyquist also picks up an assist. O'Reilly picks up an assist. So all three members of the top line pick up assists in this game. Sherwood picks up an assist in his return to the lineup. Good to see him back out there as well. On the defensive side of things, the captain, Roman Yossi, no stranger to picking up a point and an assist. And now that puts Roman Yossi up to 50 on the season with that assist. Also picking up assists from Luzon and McDonough. Good job by the blue line for the Nashville Purs, not just playing a good defensive game and a good physical game, but also chipping in on the offense. When it comes to shots on goal, it was Yakov Trenin leading the Nashville Purs in shots on goal with six in this game. Dante Fabro. Also back in the lineup, told you it wasn't his fault. The team would be better with him back in the lineup. Dante Fabro with four shots on goal, second on the team in this game in his 17.09 of total time on ice. Captain Romeo Yossi has three shots on goal. Phil Forsberg also has three shots on goal. Nobody else with more than two. When it comes to block shots, not that many on the team in this game, but Alex Carey did lead in this statistical category with three in the game. Luzon had two, and then a couple of the forwards chipped in with two. Let's just name them off. Forsberg, Sissons, and also Nyquist with two blocked shots 
each in this game. When it comes to the physical component of things, and I laugh because every time I get to the column, I, I look down and I'll see a four, I'll see a five, and I'll be like, oh, okay, that must be, and then I'll get down to lose on, and it's an eight. This time it's an eight. The other day it was a 10. This time it's an eight. Sometimes it's a seven, a six. It's always a lot. He is tracking and trending towards the NHL record for hits in a season, and I think there's no doubt with the consistency of level of hits that he puts up, and he's going into Vegas where they typically inflate the number of hits. Keep an eye on that. When when we come out of the next game, see if they have an inflate. Uh, Miami or wherever it is that the uh, the Panthers play and Vegas, they tend to inflate the number of hits in a game dramatically. So we'll see. Luzon had eight hits in this game. Shen had five hits in this game, second on the team. And it was Yakov Trenin adding four hits in this game. Time on ice leaders. 1944, Ryan O'Reilly. No surprise to see the veteran in St. Louis returning to where he won a Stanley Cup and leading the forwards in time on ice. Also picking up a goal and assist, two shots on net. You know all that already. It was also 15.50 on total time on ice for Philip Forsberg and 17.25 for Colton. This is on the defensive side of things. It was, in fact, not the captain, Roman Yossi, leading the team in total time on ice for the game, but it was Ryan McDonough, 22.38. Yossi shortly behind that at 22.17. Special teams time on on ice leaders and reminder your special teams the power play went one for four for the Nashville Predators 309 on the power play for Nyquist 307 for Forsberg 305 for O'Reilly and again they cashed in one time on the power play 350 for the captain Roman Yossi when it comes to shorthanded time on ice on the penalty kill three out of four remember the one that they did give up was a five on three and they just missed killing that one off by two seconds your penalty kill time on ice leaders they did a hell of a job in this game on the road in St. Louis it was 302 for Colton Sissons, 207 for Jankowski, 205 for O'Reilly, and 206 for Cole Smith. And the defenseman certainly chipped in with a shorthanded time on ice. A lot of minutes eaten up by Ryan McDonough at 436. And then you'll see Luzana 222, Carey at 219, and Shen at 204. In that, UC Sars extraordinary in every way in this game. 35 out of 37, the two goals against one of those was a five on three. I'm not really going to get too damn upset about that. 946 in game save percentage is one of the highest. He's put up all season long other than when he's had those two shutouts. Eight, eight power play saves, and he was just dialed in as a machine using all the tools of the trade. He was using his edge work. He was tracking. He was focused, and he was dynamic and athletic out there on the rink. One shorthanded save added to the entirety of this performance, and UC Saros easily puts up one of his top five performances of this entire season to earn his 21st victory. Other numbers falling out of the box score of note that I'd like to bring your attention. I am very pleased to report to you that the National Predators had a 60.4 face-off winning percentage. Moving Glass and also, who else moved over? No, Novak moved back to center for this game. Moving Glass over to the wing and Novak the previous game over to the wing seemed to alleviate some of the pressure on the Nashville Predators pivots uh, and that has allowed their face-off winning percentage to go up, up, up the last couple of games. 60, 60.4% is a tremendous face-off winning percentage. Very happy to see that and I know a lot of that has to do with Ryan O'Reilly and Colton Sisson and Michael McCarron obviously uh, doing well and in case uh, I haven't already mentioned it congratulations to Michael McCarron on his two year contract extension with the Nashville Predators. Preds also had 28 hits in this game and of course Luzon had 8 of those 28. 17 block shots, 6 takeaways 4 giveaways to the Preds on top of the battle in takeaways versus giveaways that is also a positive enjoy when that happens in the particular statistical metrics in the box or the good cold hard numbers that's going to wrap it up this, this is a good cold hard number though to add to that to supplement if you will Two of two points out of the road trip so far. One game, two points available. The Predators have seized those two points. Started better, competed better, won a game, picked up two points in a critical, critical moment in the season. Now, they need to keep gaining that momentum. Vegas is a very difficult building for the Predators to play in. They've had a tough time playing there ever since the Knights came into the league. So for the Preds, keep gaining momentum. Maybe this is that one-off odd game where the Preds fight like hell and get one point, but it turns out to be a tremendous positive moving forward for the rest of the road trip. Again, this is, to me, the toughest stop on this road trip. L.A. being the second toughest stop on this road trip with the way they've been turning their momentum around lately. San Jose, Anaheim, those are winnable games. As a matter of fact, I think the Preds need to and must win those games against teams below them in the standings. But for the Preds, continue gaining momentum. And uh, and we have come to have some better understanding on something that happened after the Dallas game. We heard head coach Andrew Burnett talking about players need to focus on their jobs, focus on the game, focus on playing hockey, stop focusing on things that were distracting them off the ice, vacations, things like that. It was 
vague but also directed enough to kind of understand that there was something going on. Well, it looks like uh, it has been uh, understood now perhaps what one of the incidents going on. And the National Predators, again, have come out after the Dallas game and secured a victory. But after that victory in St. Louis, game one of a five-game road trip, instead of the Predators flying on off on Saturday evening and heading on out to Vegas and spending Saturday, Sunday, Monday in Vegas before playing the Vegas Golden Knights on Tuesday, the Nashville Predators decided to take the plane and come on back to Nashville, and they'll now fly out much, much closer to game time, which will disallow anyone on the Nashville Predators from having any type of social occasions out there in Vegas. Now, listen, it is no secret Nashville's on that list, too. There are some cities across the professional sports landscapes where teams try to limit their players' exposure to that city. Vegas is obviously at the top of that list because of all of the peripheral trouble that you could find yourself in in Vegas, and it doesn't take very long. Nashville is very much the same, and there are other cities on the list. But I was surprised to hear that the Nashville Predators were coming back from St. Louis to Nashville before going to Vegas later in the week to continue the road trip. Well, it turns out maybe some of the Nashville Predators players, maybe some of the staff, were a little too excited about going to potentially see you 2 at the Sphere out in Vegas while they had some downtime. Barry Trotz, in the most dad GM moment, said, I'm going to turn this plane around because you guys aren't doing what you need to be doing. And the head coach obviously was in total agreement with that. So we now believe that's what those comments were about the other night after the Dallas game from the head coach. And we also believe that's why the team turned the plane around after winning in St. Louis and did not continue on to Vegas. Listen, maybe it's all just coincidence and that was always the plan to travel back to Nashville, but it sure seems like the rumor out there is the Predators wanted to go see you 2 at the Sphere, and you know what? I'd like to go see that show too. Sounds pretty fun. But unfortunately, I can't get out of work right now, and that work is covering this Nashville Predators hockey team. So, we'll all have to go to the Sphere sometime after June when the non-playing portion of the season finally arrives for the entirety of the league. But for the Nashville Predators players, that's a lesson in remaining focused on your job and perhaps taking advantage of the social opportunities when they arrive. But for the Nashville Predators, it sounds like no U2 for this particular Preds group at this time. Hopefully the Preds continue the momentum though in Vegas. That's going to do it for Operation number 871. There's outdoor hockey to watch in the Northeast. I decided to wear my Winter Classic hat out here. Well, one, because it is absolutely freezing here in Middle Tennessee and two, to celebrate all things outdoor hockey. It's fun. I played in the U.S. Pond Hockey Championships on Lake Nokomis in Minnesota. I scored three goals in the tournament up there. I'm very, very proud of that. I also injured my hip tremendously badly. Got some great photos taken of me, uh, but skated on Lake Nokomis. I played outdoors here in Nashville. Nashville during All-Star Weekend when we had the smallest rink set up outside for a three-on-three tournament down on Broadway. And I played outside, of course, as a kid like uh, so many of the players playing in these games uh, talk about and doing. And uh, But for me, it was more of playing on a, a frozen marsh in New Jersey with weeds sticking up through it. It wasn't the best hockey, but uh, you know, I sure as hell love getting out there and playing with my friends when I was a kid. And uh, I, I love doing it still today with my Renegades of Puck. So appreciate each and every one of you. Operation 871 in the books. We'll be back in the trenches. Vegas has that week weird game coming up on Monday. We'll try to slip in another preview before Tuesday gets here, before Tuesday night gets here, especially with the Preds having a late start. We'll give you some content to digest. Appreciate each and every one of you. I'll say it like this. I appreciate your viewership. I appreciate your time. And most importantly, I appreciate each and every one of you. I'm your host and captain, Crazy Charlie Sonia. Stick taps, love, and respect. (laughs) 